I'm so thankful, so thankful to be here. I am uh, just such a, such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord and to just study the Word of God. I know that there are many things that we could do. There's many parts of the church that, um, you know, we could, we could go into this and go into that. But in reality, uh, the Lord puts the study of His Word above a lot of things. He puts it above a lot of things that we think, oh, that's important or this is important. But He tells us that we need to study to show ourselves approved. Study to understand. Study that we might not be deceived. Amen? And so tonight we're going to be studying the Word of God. Before we get started, I want to just give you a couple of announcements. First of all, uh, very important. I think it's going to be not only very important, but it's going to be very fun. This weekend on Friday night, we're having a camp out out at uh, Ethan's Land out towards Iola. If you don't know where it's at, we'll text you a link and you can just drop it in your phone and it'll tell you where you're going. It's kind of crazy that we can do that nowadays. Uh, used to, it was like turn left at the second tree. Now it's like, drop me a pin. It's like, how am I supposed to? It's weird. Anyway, so uh, that's Friday night. We're going to have camping. And on Saturday, we want everybody to come out. I mean, bring you, bring your neighbor, bring your neighbor you don't know. Tell them to come. We're going to have a great time. I don't know all the list of things they're going to be doing, but I think it's something to do with throwing darts at kids or something like that. I don't know. Uh, no, axes at trees. That's what it is. Anyway, so, uh, but we're going to have a great time. And uh, I think, really, I do believe there's, there's multiple things to do. And what's incredible is the host has set up air conditioning for everybody in the entire area just for our event isn't that cool it's going to be like 70 degrees all day oh man it's going to be awesome i told you about the host and he's really doing it so it's all about him and uh so that's the first thing second thing is um i want to just kind of get a random person here and uh i'm just kind of thinking a little a little scenario here so christy how many how many i guess she's like Ooh. how many friends you got on facebook guesstimate how much 100? Oh, you, oh, you, never mind. Just the button, you, how long have you been on Facebook? You've been on Facebook since it was like born. How, how, long, how many friends you got on there? About a thousand? How many friend, mutual friends do we have on there? Half, 500? So you know 500 people that I don't know on Facebook. Pretty cool. Anybody else? Anybody got more than a thousand friends and half of them are you know, what, what, what about over here? So, Janelle, how many, how many friends you got on Facebook? How many are we common friends with? Still not know? We've got, so everybody besides about maybe 200 people, you know that I don't know. Isn't that incredible? So what I'm trying to paint you a picture here is this. Uh, we need your help. We really do need your help. We are not coming to church for ourselves. We're not studying the Word of God for ourselves. We're not hosting anything that we're doing for ourselves. This is all about others. Amen? Oh, come on. Some of y'all think it's a trick. It's no trick. It's all about others, right? Ain't no trick to that. This isn't about me. I'm already in the church. This is about others. Come on. Amen. And so what we need you to understand is when we first got online, man, everybody in the church was like, oh. Likey, 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 share, share, share. And it just exploded and it all went all over the place and it's been great. But now you have lost interest in our efforts, you. So we need you to get back on board. Um, the, the algorithms are built to where the more people that share and comment, liking is on the low end of the totem pole. You can like it, but that doesn't mean anything. Say something comment i'm talking to those in the camera comment say something i'm not the only one up here actually i am the only one up here right now but i'm not the only one in the house that knows what i'm talking about we need your help and so you can take what we've produced tonight or last night if you didn't see last night about uh, uh foster care you need to go back and look at it it was just an incredible incredible program a uh, great guest great host I mean, and uh, I was half the host, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, so uh, please help us. Is that good? Everybody on board? Everybody on board. Okay, so that's the announcements. We need you 
to get on board. And uh, I think that uh, sadly, we are going through transitions. And I, I say sadly, I don't think that's sadly. I was, over, I was praying over here uh, day before yesterday, three days ago, whatever it was, on Monday I think it was, and I was praying, God, uh, stir us up, change our norms, change our, our way of doing things. And I didn't have to go very long until I felt in my spirit, God said, I did. <laughs> and unfortunately, some of us haven't responded well. But God is wanting us to realize that all the work that is going on is intended so that more people would hear the gospel. Please share what's going on. Amen? Amen. With all that said, we need to go to the Lord in prayer. And I've got a, a great prayer, uh, prayer uh, praise report. I uh, want to say that Sister Vita had some troubles and went to the doctor and got a great report today. We're so thankful for that. Uh, praise the Lord, yes. And uh, several of our other people that have, that have been dealing with sicknesses and problems, and uh, they've gotten great reports. Sister Shy was like cooped up in prison. She couldn't hardly get, wait to get out. She's out. Watch the roads. But uh, we do want to we do want to pray for all those that are not doing well uh, and and uh, just just sick that kind of thing. So with that said, would would you mind uh, just standing with me? Uh, we're going to have two parts to this service, actually three, counting this part. Uh, the third part I'll explain to you later. But we're going to go into a Bible study and then we're going to go into part three. But right now, let's just pray for these needs. Can y'all do that with me and ask God to touch our elders and our our country? Lord, we worship you, we honor you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. Thank you, Lord, for the ability that we have within ourselves to rise up and to come into this house, to, to get on the computer, to watch, Lord God, to hear uh, your word, to study your word, to show ourselves approved. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us and what you're continuing to do. I pray that you would touch these that are sick, touch these that are hurting, Lord God, I pray, bring peace to those that are troubled and strength to those that are weak. I pray in the name of Jesus that your hand be upon your people. Oh Lord, that you would stir our hearts to do more for you while we can. And we give you glory, we give you honor and praise. We thank you, Lord, for your truth. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you, Lord, for your healing virtue, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you may be seated. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you two things quickly. First of all, things are changing. I was talking to uh, uh, Scott Goodman over here a while ago, and I want you to see something that is just, uh, I'm going to try to do it a minim visible manifestation of what's going on. When all of this started out, COVID started out, we were put in a state of shock and fear, and we were shut down. And so as time has gone by, we have gained knowledge, we have gained understanding of what's going on, how deadly it is, how, uh, how high the hospitalization rate is, on and on and on. We are now seeing, and we did not know how to treat patients of COVID. Now we're seeing elders, in fact, uh, his, his dad, who is, how old is he, 80? 78, pretty close. His dad got COVID last weekend, started taking hydrochloroquine, yeah, yeah, whatever, chlorine bleach. I'm just playing. Uh, never mind. So uh, anyway, uh, so he, he started taking uh, that and zinc and everything else. And he, on Friday he started, on Monday he was over it. It was that quick. So what we've got to realize is, if, and this is what I want you to visually see, here's where we discovered COVID, all these issues. If you take the statements from then, and you still live in that understanding, you've missed a lot of progress. And you've got to realize that we know things now that we did not know. So don't live in fear. Please don't live in fear. That, in fact, uh, I, was, I was studying a couple of days ago, and it, that scripture come through, and it says, men's hearts failing them for fear. And I thought, dear God, that's, that's where a lot of people live today. So we don't want you fearing. We want you to live boldly for Christ, and take uh, advantage of the things that we have in our lives. Do you realize that some of you have had a lot of excuses to not witness? There's no excuse now. All you got to do is push share. Boy, how simple is that? I mean, there, there's, there won't be an excuse. There will be no excuses. So uh, get on board. Luke chapter 22 and 31. I'm going to read that. And I'm going to try to quickly go through part two of this message. 
Uh, this is part two I'm getting ready to get into. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And uh, you, you can see it on your screen. Uh, says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Now, I, I read this recently, and some of you remember read, me reading it. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Satan wants to have you, to sift you as wheat. There's some meaning behind that we need to understand, and then we'll go on to some other parts of the Scripture. Lord, I pray that you would help us tonight. Lead us and guide us. Let this word, Lord God, drop into the hearts of every man and, the, and every woman, every child, Lord God, and let it, let it grow fruit, Lord God, where people might live by your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And may God bless you. Thank you. The, the scene is um, pretty heartbreaking at this point because without a pause, Jesus sitting um, at the table, the communion table, uh, had, possibly even with the cup still in his hands, says, there is someone here that will betray me. Someone that I have, uh, I have taught, someone that I have helped, someone that I have uh, ministered to, someone that has seen great miracles. There's someone at this table. And, and like I said, I can imagine him maybe even with his hands still wrapped around the cup of communion. Someone here is going to betray, betray me. And of course, the disciples, they began to question amongst themselves, uh, uh, inside themselves, is it me, is it this one, is it that one? And if Luke is writing in a chronological order, we know that Judas, sometime during that questioning, uh, Judas Iscariot um, slipped out the side door, went down the steps, and did his uh, part in the betrayal of Christ. He knew, Jesus knew of Jesus's, uh, bar, I mean, Judas, Judas's bargain, his, his bargain to take his life. But Jesus also knew that it was a necessary act. But um, the, the numbing reality of that event, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm still kind of stopped up from the last week, but the numbing reality of that, that event uh, that bared the, the shame of a man that walked with Jesus for three years. That is, that is dumbfounding. And amidst, uh, in, amidst the conversation that followed, we find um, the, the men that follow Jesus as we know them, disciples or apostles, uh, in the solemnity of that last supper, they began to have a conversation amongst them. First, it was, is it you, is it me? But then for somehow, and I don't know exactly how, the conversation turned to where they began to argue about who was the greatest in the kingdom. Man, you talk about, I'm thinking in my mind, uh, you know, Jesus is sitting there and he's talking about being betrayed. And all of a sudden he begins to see all these guys that he's teaching and training and hoping uh, that they're going to fulfill his great commission in just a few days. They're going to they're gonna get it. And, and they, you know, it's kind of like he, they, they didn't catch what he taught. And so he, I'm sure there was a knowledge. In fact, I know there was a knowledge there. And I'll explain that a little bit more as we go. But there was a knowledge there that these were just common men. And, and you have to realize that they weren't full of the Spirit at this point. They were just common men they were just working off of zeal and ideology they 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 still had in their mind a earthly kingdom that was going to be set up and and so it was hard for them to grasp uh not having ambition it was hard for them to to lay down their ambition and just just be a servant for that is really what jesus had been teaching for three years I want you to be a servant. You think, think about that for a moment. All of our lives, we have been following, I mean, most of us, m many of us, have been following Jesus Christ. Whether, whether it's been in this church or another church, I'm going to be a follower. We made up our mind as a young person. I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. And yet, sometimes we don't really grasp the meaning, what that, what that really means. We don't understand that Jesus is saying, I want you to be a servant. I want you to be a servant. It's hard to grasp he taught sacrifice he exemplified sacrifice he taught sacrificial or or servant leadership i mean the list goes on but jesus saw them arguing 
and he realized what was going on. And of course, as another teaching moment, he told them, this is the way the Gentiles act. This is the way uh, they act. They lord over each other. They give each other titles and names to bring each other to a certain level. But they domineer over each other and practice uh, practice selfishness, and that's, but that's not the way you're going to act. And so we find the men evidently began to calm down, and, and uh, the Lord, I don't know if he addressed Peter uh, because he was the loudest always in the room. You know, it's one of those guys that's just always there in the center of attention. I don't know if that's the reason why, but when men, that Jesus explained to them that this is the way the the Gentiles are going to act. I don't want you to act like that. He, there, I, I just, I'm just imagining. I don't, it's not in the Bible, but I'm imagining there was a pause. There was a time there to where Jesus was kind of looking around. And maybe, maybe you know, the, the conversation kind of faded and yet Peter was still talking. I don't know if that's what happened. But for some reason, uh, Jesus uh, addressed Peter specifically. And we read this in verse 31. Simon Satan has desired. He has asked to sift you as wheat. Uh, but I have prayed for you. Let, let, me, let me go there for a moment. And I want you to understand something. I'm, I'm teaching on something that you probably don't quite grasp yet. But just bear with me. Jesus had to give permission for Satan to sift Peter. So we've got to realize that if we know anything in the word of God, God has to give permission for Satan to do almost anything. That's just the way it is. Obviously, he, his pride exceeded uh, his ability to submit. So there was, there, was some, there was some issues there. But we know by looking at the book of Job that uh, the, the Satan himself, the Bible says in, in, in context, he says that Satan was roaming about throughout the world and and Jesus or the Lord looked at him and said hey have you considered my servant Job he put him out there to be tested he put him out there to, to you know you just, just have you looked at Job what an awesome man oh but Satan Satan knew Satan said oh no 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 if I take everything from him he'll curse you he'll 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 turn around of course I'm paraphrasing a lot of scriptures He'll, he'll turn his back on you. And so the Lord told Job, you know what? Do everything, but just, you cannot take his life. You can, you can take everything but his life. And, of course, we know the um, series of events. I believe it was first, and I, I probably have it on a list here somewhere. But we know that uh, we, we find that the Sabians, here we go, the Sabians first came and attacked his family, then fire. Uh, 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 destroyed part of his family then the Chaldeans came and destroyed some and then a great wind came and before the, that by the end of all this series of events Job had lost it all <coughs> excuse me and in the process of all these troubles Job lost everything but at the end of all these troubles Job Job's answer was still consistent with the man that God thought he was Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord will take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says simply one verse, which is probably one of the most greatest compliments any man can receive. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. God, why did you take this from me? Why did you do that? That's not, he didn't even, it's just incredible that a man like that would lose so much and then not sin, not, not even charge God falsely, foolishly is what it says. The picture though is that Satan is standing before God expecting this man to fail and to fall. In, in reality, when you look at the upper room, when, when they were partaking in the Last Supper, they did fall. These what we know today as awesome men of God, they fell. Jesus said, Peter, Satan wants to. He knew the mind of Satan. He knew, in fact, maybe Satan had already come to him and said, I want to I I destroy 
Peter. I want to separate him. The sifting as we is a as a separation the good from the bad, or the the the, the they wanted to sift Peter away from the blessings of God. He wanted to separate him from what was going to save him, separate him from what was going to make him who he should be, separate Peter from his possibilities. And so here we see this manifestation of of destruction taking place. And of course, over the next few days, we do find that Peter and the other apostles, they did fail. They fell and, and they walked away and Jesus hung upon the cross and there was just a few women that was there. And the ones that the ones that he put so much into weren't even there. It's incredible that we see that picture. Yet, Jesus said, and I think this is just, it's so, so important. Jesus said, looked at him and said, Satan does desire to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. What we must recognize is that Jesus is our advocate. Jesus is, you hear me today, Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. When you fall, when you fail, when you destroy, when you feel like you have destroyed everything, you have an advocate in heaven that is praying for you desiring to see you not stay on the ground not waller in your sins or in your shame but to rise above that church hear me tonight i have a motive i have a motive i have something to say i want you to understand this jesus is our advocate but he's not only our advocate he's the advocate of every sinner every sinner you hear me that is incredible i happen to have the high privilege of having someone explain to me their reason for not being at church over the last several weeks or months or whatever it may be the other day and i was like explain it to me why not you know here i am okay y'all know i'm pastor i'm like so you got a reason well exp- pray tell Oh, if we could just see through the eyes of Jesus. If we could just see through the eyes of Jesus. I was told that they're just embarrassed. That when they walk back into the church, people will know that they failed the test. And they're going to be ashamed. I thought, dear God, why is that? Why? Why is that? And I know, I realize the reason why. People look through their carnal eyes and they don't see the spirit of Jesus. And unfortunately, sometimes they look at us and don't see the spirit of Jesus. God help us to rise above the junk and the and the intimidating factors and the shame and and the things that are behind us and the things that are before us and, and, and not judge so harshly that those that have fallen Those that have fallen, they're not welcome back. Jesus didn't even do that. Come on. Jesus said, say, Peter, Peter, when you have have returned, when you have uh, renewed yourself, when you have become a new creature in Christ, I want you to go and strengthen those that are around you. I want you to bless those that are around you. I want you to get, hey, in other words, if you get the, the mental image, I want you to get your arm under someone's shoulder and say, let me help you get into a place with God that you can, that you can prosper. I want you to bless others. The presence of Jesus Christ in our church service or in our life isn't about us. Boy, I wish we could understand that and get a grip grip on it. The presence of Jesus Christ in our life, it's not about me. It's not about my prosperity or my blessings. It's not about about my title or or my spirituality even. I know that's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against being spiritual. But all of this is about saving the lost about reaching those that feel unreachable and about giving hope to those that feel like they have no hope. 
God help us. God help us. Their love, the disciples, the apostles, the love for Jesus, their love and devotion for Jesus ran just as deep as ours. I want you to realize this. Just bear with me for a moment. I'm going to close here in a minute. We're going to shift gears. People are wondering what I'm going to do next. Hang tight. Their love and devotion for Jesus ran just as deep as ours, possibly deeper. They loved Jesus, but they failed Jesus. Jesus' love for them runs just as deep as it does for us. And it runs just as deep for those that would hear me tonight. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. Don't sin. Don't be a sinner. Amen? That's, I mean, I know that we, that's kind of, we might need to get a list of sins that everybody understands. I'm just kidding, obviously. But the Bible doesn't stop there. It says, and if any man does sin... Don't be a sinner. And if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is, he, as sure as he told Peter, Peter, Satan wants to sift you, but I have prayed for you. Just as sure as those words were real to Peter, can I tell you today that that's the same words he speaks to the people uh, that love the Lord? Hey, hey. I know Satan wants to destroy you, but I'm praying for you. He's still an advocate for his people. Today, in this very moment, in this day, in this radical and weird and crazy day when things are turned upside down and we're not really what we should be. None of us are really what we should be, are we? None of us are all that we could be, are we? We do good works and we do good things and we pray. And I know people, I've, I've talked to people that said, I pray all day, every day, and I don't pray enough. Isn't that the way we really are? But we have an advocate. We have someone, a comforter, that looks at us in mercy, through the eyes of mercy, not just in the eyes, I don't mean to, just belittle it to that little part through the eyes of mercy and grace. No, he looks through his heart, his desire, his long-standing policy, his greatest desire is that all men be saved. That all, well, let's just go into modern vernacular, that everybody be saved. His desire is that we all be saved. And if that is his desire, what should our desire be? It should never, ever be, ever ever be that we individually or even as a whole look upon the, those that are absent or those that have missed or those that have fallen, those that have struggled that we should look down on them or belittle them or you know some of the little little small cliches that we use that, that it really we shouldn't even have to say it. Oh I haven't seen you in a while where have you been? About time you showed up to church. If that's all we've got to say, as our mamas used to say, you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. I'm telling you what the best thing we can do is stand beside them and worship and love them and care for them and show them the love that Jesus showed us. Satan wants to sift you. But I have prayed for you. I love you. I'm invested in you. I care for you. I care for you. I care for you. I, as a pastor, I'm just going to bare my soul for a moment, if you don't mind. I'm struggling. <laughs> not, not in the sense that I started, picked up, you know, crack or anything. I didn't do that. But I'm struggling. Church has changed. The, the, the picture of the church has changed. The pews are all different. People are not in their, well, most, most of you are sitting in your same seats, but uh, I don't know how you did that, but anyway, you did. Things have changed. People that's not here, I want to call them, but then I, 
then I feel like all I'm doing is condemning them. When I call them, I don't want to condemn anybody. Well, I, and then I have had people, you know, that, well, you don't need to call me. I'm fine. Like, oh, okay. Then they make it look like me. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. Just check it. Amen. Things have changed. But church, God hasn't. His mercy and His grace and His love is as strong today as it ever was. If you've failed God, you have an advocate. If you have stumbled, you have an advocate. If you have struggled, you have an advocate. And it's not just Jesus, it's the church. It's the people of God that want to see others in the kingdom, that want to invest in others around them, others in the community, others in their, in their network. Amen. We use that big word now, these modern words. Oh, we got a network. You should be investing in others in your network. Bringing them and showing them the love of Jesus. There is a third part, and I'm getting ready to get into it, to this lesson tonight. I've got a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to get into them. But I do want to shift to another thing, another event. Let me, let me before I go, let me, let me throw this in there. Satan doesn't need any help. Amen? He don't need any help. Uh, we, don't, we don't need any more accusers in the kingdom. We don't need any more accusers of the brethren. We don't need that. Our greatest ministry is not what you think. And I'm going to tell you this from my own perspective. My greatest ministry is not preaching or pastoring. I know some people want me to be their pastor. Some people want me to be their preacher. And there is two different, that's two different things. My greatest ministry is not preaching or pastoring. My greatest ministry, my greatest ministry is reconciling souls to the kingdom. Making a way where there seems to be, in their eyes, where there seems to be no way. We have, and, and I'm going to give you a couple scriptures and I'm going to go to the part three. In James chapter 5 and verse 19, the scripture says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1 through 2, and I'm going to pause, I'm stopping here. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself or thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. It should be part of our daily or weekly agenda that we share the love of Jesus with others. And of all people, all people, we should reach out to those that have stumbled. We should reach out to those that have stumbled. Where would we be without a backslider preaching Acts chapter 2? Come on. Where would, be we, where would we be without having a backslider stand up and say, thus saith the word of the Lord. I'm thankful that God gave a backslider the first message that was ever preached to the church. So tonight, I want to bring us to another, again, third part, if you will, of this service. And, and they might want to um, not record this. It, it will just What we're going to do is we're going to have a time of prayer. From our... Superintendent, in the midst of national crisis and uncertainty, it is essential that we fervently intercede for the upcoming 2020 U.S. presidential and congressional election. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. 
and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. A national day of prayer for 20 for the year 2020 of the US for the excuse me for the 2020 US presidential and congressional elections will occur on Wednesday, October the 14th. Churches are encouraged to join in corporate prayer for these pivotal elections that will convene on Tuesday, November the 3rd of 2020. Following are the prayer points that we would like to pray. Number one, pray for those who are candidates in the upcoming presidential and congressional elections. Intercede that God's will be done regarding whoever he desires to fill the open positions of these offices as well as other vacancies. His word declares in Psalms 75 and 7, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. I would like for all of us to rise if you don't mind. We're going to spend a few moments of time. I want you to, I want you to, but if, if, and I pray to God that none of you do leave, but um, if, <laughs> if you leave before we get through praying, I want you to take um, one day a week minimum and I'm going to encourage you to start today, Wednesday, and start the next Wednesday and the next Wednesday to pray. Just spend your time praying for our elections. I know you, most of you, most of you do not realize the... Possible at the least is the, is the easiest way to say it. It's probably more than probable is what the right word would be. The probable chaos that some people are designing for our nation if certain people don't get elected. Church, America has been a God, a, a gift from God to the world. I, I hope you believe that. We are an exceptional nation. We have done a great job, but we're not great. We're not amazing, but we are a hand that God can use. And what we have done is we have turned our back on God. And I want us as a group, as a church, you hear me tonight, I want this to be as intense as we've ever prayed. God, please touch our nation. Touch these candidates. God raise up, and I'm telling you right now that thousands of other churches around our nation are praying those very words, and I want us to join with them right now. Can we pray that God would touch our nation and touch our elections? Lord God, we come before you, our King, our Savior, our Healer. Lord, I pray to God that you would work. Lord God, I pray that you would move, Lord God that you would touch every candidate, that you would touch, Lord God, every branch of our government, that you would touch, Lord God, our nation, that you would lead and guide the elections, that you would raise up, Lord God, those men and women, Lord God, that you honor, that you desire to be in that position, that you would manifest, Lord God, your presence in our elections, Lord God, that you would stand strong, Lord God, for your people and your people, which are called by your name, would stand strong for you. I pray in the name of Jesus, by your power, by your might, that you would work, Lord God, where we cannot. We stand upon your word. We stand upon your power, your promises. But Lord, we cannot change our destiny without you. We pray in the name of Jesus. <coughs> oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, touch our country. Touch our nation. Touch every election. Touch every state, every district. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let your work be done. Lord God, do not let us fall to the devices of the devil. Do not let us stumble, Lord God, at the devices of those that would destroy your name. Lord God, don't let us, Lord God, get distracted by the things that would destroy our country. 
but let us, Lord God, as individuals, let us, O Lord, as a church, let us, Lord God, as your church, as your people around this nation, stand up and do the work you've called us to do. And guide us, Lord, as we vote. Guide us, Lord, as we, we vote for people that would lead and guide this country. And I pray that you would help those people, Lord God, oh Lord, to be godly to the best of their ability, to follow after your word, Lord God, to the best of their ability, that your, your power would manifest itself when they go to vote, when they, when they make their rulings. Oh Lord, when they make their judgments, Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch our Congress those that now that are debating, Lord God, the next uh, chief justice or the justice on the Supreme Court, I pray that you would touch those people, Lord God, that you would touch their minds and their hearts, that they would put, Lord God, the right person, the, a righteous person, Lord God, in that seat on the Supreme Court. Lord God, that you, Lord Jesus, would receive all glory and honor through that court, Lord God. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Lord, hear our cry. Lord, hear our cry. We humble ourselves before you. We repent of our sins, Lord God, as a nation and as individuals. Forgive us, Lord, I pray. And hear our cry. Hear our cry. Hear our cry, Lord God. We seek your face. We seek your will. We seek your way, Lord Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God, let your spirit work in our world and our nation. Let us continue to be a light, Lord God, to the world. A light that shines your truth and mercy and grace throughout the world, Lord God. Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray that voters would look beyond personal biases and to that which most honors God. And represents biblical values and his interests and desires for this nation. I still believe and I know that I'm going to go way back in history and some might wonder what I mean. I still believe that we have a manifest destiny. A God given mandate to be a light upon the hill of truth and of justice and of God. And so I think we need to go back one more time and pray. We've got two more prayers. If you don't mind, bear with me. Church, we have to take this personal. We cannot slough this off and say, well, let somebody else pray. This is us. We have to pray. Can we pray that God would help voters to see clearly, to, to, to vote not based on biases, but on righteousness? Can we do that right now, Lord? Will you see every voter, Lord God, Lord, throughout every election, from the local to the national, Lord God, you see every individual that will post, will, will, will put their name on that line and that will vote, Lord God. I pray that you would uh, manifest yourself in their decision, Lord God. Give them a heart and a mind to vote based on righteousness and on truth, upon the, on the thing that would most, uh, most uh, please you, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would work, Lord God, in every voting booth, in every county, in every jurisdiction, in every precinct, Lord God. I pray that you would manifest yourself in every voting booth throughout this country. And Lord, that you would receive glory in every voter in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Pray that God would prohibit every effort and proposed legislation 
that seeks to remove our knowledge of God in our nation. Psalms 33 and 12 declares, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Let's ask God to touch every uh, legislature and every piece of legislation. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us, Lord God, touch every legislature, touch every piece of legislation. I pray in the name of Jesus that you, Lord God, would work against every uh, illicit, every ungodly piece of legislation, that you would work against those that would rise up in the Congress or in the Senate or in, in the county courthouse or wherever else it may be, that would try to remove this nation from our love for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would work where no man can work. Work in the hearts and souls of your people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now that you would work, Lord God, through every uh, lawmaker, Lord God, through every judge, through every courthouse, Lord God, that you would work, Lord God, through every one of these, Lord Jesus, through the law enforcers, Lord God, that you would strengthen their hand to give you glory above everything else. Lord, even if they think it's a mistake, let them vote in line with your will, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. And lastly, lastly, we need to go to the Lord in prayer for this. Pray for healing, for revival, for restoration, and for harvest in America. Intercede that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And let his Shekinah glory be manifested in our world. I'm going to go again and I'm going to ask you to join with me. Let's pray, please, that God would manifest his spirit throughout our nation. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you when we bring you one great and final request. Lord God, that you would bring a restoration, a revival, Lord God, to our country. Oh God, that you would bring a healing, Lord Jesus, and a harvest to America, Lord God, that you would pour out your power and spirit upon all men. Oh Lord, that we might seek your will and way, Lord God, not only as church people, Lord God, not only as followers, oh Lord, of you, but Lord, upon the whole nation, Lord God, bring revival, Lord God, of truth. Bring a revival, Lord God, of your power. Bring a revival of respect to your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Lord, bring revival to our schools. Bring revival to our courthouses. Bring revival, Lord God, to every area of our homes. Every area of our schools. Every area, Lord God, of our counties and our cities. In the name of Jesus. Bring revival, Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray. Oh, Lord, by the power and the name of Jesus. Lord, let your work be done tonight. Let our prayer be heard in heaven, Lord God. Please, God, turn our country back to you. Please, Lord Jesus, turn our country back to you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord touch our nation touch our nation too many Lord God have sacrificed too many have bled and died too many have given their lives Lord God to create a nation that would give you glory Lord God, don't let us fail you now. Lord, if we do fail you, if this nation fails you over the next few weeks, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would have a church that would not fail you. Lord, give us the mind and the heart and the desire. Give us a backbone of steel and a hard head, Lord God, to stand for your truth no matter what. 
Oh, Lord, to manifest your glory to every corner of this world, every corner of where we live, Lord God, to walk it into the stores, to walk it into the malls, to move it throughout our employment, Lord God. Let your spirit, Lord God, work in us and through us, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's say it together. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we know, we know, Lord, that you can do all things. You can do all things. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you all recording? You are. So quickly, quickly, I'm going to ask you to keep these prayer, um, this list of prayers. If you want me to, I can email you the list. I probably should have done it early this morning. I slipped my mind until midday, and I knew I had something else to do, and this was it. I'm going to ask you to take these prayers personal. Church, we cannot, we cannot allow ourselves or afford to be outside of the will of God. We cannot allow ourselves to be outside of the will of God. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for our legislatures. Amen? Let's pray for our judges. Let's pray. Hey, let's pray for our president. Let's pray that God's will be done on November the 3rd. And for those of you that are ignorant, there is an election. It's on November the 3rd. <laughs> if you've not already... Um, registered it's too late but if you have registered you need to vote and you are not a vo you are not going in there with your own agenda you're not going in there as a person you're going on in there as a follower of Christ you need to you need to make sure that when you vote you vote principles of Christ first and that is first and foremost we don't believe in abortion that's murder you do not want to be a part of that not at all, way, any way, shape, or form. You do not want to elect somebody that's going to be pro-abortion. Period. Okay? And after that, it's your business. I'm pro-gun because a gun will protect my speech. <laughs> God bless you. I pray. It's the way I think about it. Amen. I pray that God keeps you and blesses you. But I pray that you keep God and bless him more than anything. Church, it's up to us. We are full. We are, we, God, give us... Can you, do you realize God put within our own hands choices that destine us for heaven or hell? I want heaven. I want heaven. I want to make it to heaven. And I want other people to go too. I don't want to, I don't want to condemn people and keep them all over in the corner because they was wrong one day. I'd be over there with them if that was the case. I'd probably be living over there. I want the freedom to come into the house of God and worship. Amen? Let's worship him one more time as we close. In Jesus' name, Lord, we worship you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord, for your, this truth. Thank you, Lord, for your power and for your mercy and grace.